praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Shall we have a seat? You're welcome to church this morning. Today we'll be looking at a topic. God, God is always faithful. God is always faithful. And our anchor passage is taken from 1 Thessalonians 5.24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. I read from KJV. Faithful is he that collects you, who also will do it. Faithful is he that collects you, who also will do it. Why are we looking at this topic this morning? Yes, today is the last day in the month of January 2021. Some of us, we have expectations, we prayed, and the month has ended some of, we have received a lot of what we have asked for, but some of us are still trusting God for one thing or the other. But I want to assure you that God is faithful and he will do it. Basically, I will be looking at God is always faithful in three dimensions. I think we first need to understand what it means when we say God is faithful. So we we'll look at, we we'll try and understand that. Then the second dimension is we want to look at examples of faithfulness of God in the Bible and even in contemporary days. And finally... I, want, I would like us to look at how we have positioned ourselves for the faithfulness of God. So when we look at what does it mean to be faithful, the word faithful. Basically, the word faithful, if you check the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it says steadfast in affection or allegiance. It could also mean firm in adherence to promises or in observing duty. So... It also means true to the facts or the original, which means God is actually true to the facts. And when you say faithful, when you think of that, that means faithfulness involves being true to one's words or promise. If you say something, you do it. So it also means remaining loyal and steadfast. So when you look at all these qualities, then want to say, okay, what does the faithfulness of God mean to me? What does it mean to you? In his faithfulness, what does it mean? It means that we are sure and we have confidence that his promises will be fulfilled. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, no matter what we are facing, no matter how down you might have been, but he will fulfill his promises because he's unstoppable. But to who? To those that obey his words. That's where the challenge lies. To those that obey his words. He will fulfill his promises. All the promises in the Bible, no matter how many they are, to those that obey his words. But there is also another dimension. It will execute judgment on those that disobey, that disobey his words. Most of the time, when we look at faithfulness, we are always thinking he will do it, he will do it. But we also forget the other leg that for not obeying his words, also there is judgment to be executed. I pray for us this morning, we will not abuse the faithfulness of God in Jesus' name. One thing we need to look, if you look into uh, the books, of Roman, of, in our books of Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. At he said, and shall he not do it? Or at he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So which means what? God is faithful in keeping his promises. He is reliable in his declaration and promises. And he will do what he says he will do. He will always do it. When he says, it shall be well with you, it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. When he said that you will not cast your young, you will not cast your young in Jesus' name. When God says you will flourish, it means it. When he says a thousand will fall by your side and ten thousand by your right and, and it will not come near you. It shall be so in the name of Jesus. So you look at it. And when you also, you, you may want to say, oh, the, but there are so many promises. Which one should I claim? Will I not be greedy claiming all? You can claim all. So far as you stand in his words. If you look in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Check, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. What is he saying? No matter how many, all, all are yea and amen. That means all will be done. He is faithful to do it. And I pray concerning that situation that I've praised you so much, that may be making you, you know, to have to, be, to, to doubt in your heart that will it be possible? It will be possible in the mighty name of Jesus because God is faithful. 
He is faithful and he always do it. So you, you, sometimes you want to ask and say, how do I know that God will do it? How do I know that God is able to do it? It's easy for me to tell you that God is able to do it. If you look in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, Ephesians 3 20, it says that now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. What is he telling us? He is able to do more than that thing you are hoping for, that job you are looking for, that contract, that healing. God is able to do immeasurable more than that. Even the one you have not thought of, the ones you have asked, the one you are thinking of, is able to do it. That's why I know God is able to do it because the Bible says so, that God is able to do it. And you want to say, okay, I know he can do it, but eh, can you tell me some examples of where God has done it? Yes, we can pick some examples from the Bible of how God has been faithful to his children. First, I would like us to take the example of Abraham's blessings. Abraham's blessings in Genesis 22. In Genesis chapter 22, I'll pick just verse 17 and 18. It says, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And as the sand on the seashore, your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And I expect us to say amen. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Because you have done what? You have obeyed me. So God always says, obey my words. And then his promises, his faithfulness is then established in our lives. And we know that when God promised, made this promise to Abraham, we know the promise was fulfilled in Isaac. It was fulfilled in Jacob, even up to the generation of, do you know Solomon? If you look in the book of Second Chronicles 1, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses, I'll just take verses 6. Okay, we have to, I will take verses 6 to 12. He says, Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting and offered a thousand burnt offering on it. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want to give you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You have shown great kindness to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord, let your promise to my father David be confirmed, for you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as dust of the earth. Verse 10, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead these people, for who is able to govern these great people of yours? Verse 11, God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possessions, or honor, or nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom, knowledge, to govern my people over whom I May have made you good. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given you, and I will also give you wealth, possessions, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will have. Do you know what happened there? Solomon only asked for wisdom, and he asked for knowledge, but God gave him much, much more. So I decree to your life today, by the faithfulness of God, more than your expectation, the Lord will surprise you in the name of Jesus. This new year, exceedingly abundantly above all you are asking and all they are thinking, by his faithfulness, it will surprise you and your family in Jesus' name. So it is not a new thing that God is faithful. It is not a new thing that he keeps his promises. But it is important for us that we stand in, the, in, we stand in his words. We wait for him and we should be patient. I can also tell you about faithfulness. I think I will take one, I will take one more character. If your challenge is fruitfulness, fruitfulness in any area, whether fruitfulness of the body or, or in your business, you can, we can take the case of uh, Elizabeth first. Before we get there, let's look in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Okay, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. So God has promised, he blessed us with fruitfulness. And we say faithfulness means being true to his words. And so you can see in the case of Elizabeth, if you look, 
First, I want to assure you, if you check the book of Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 32, 27, it says that, I am the God, the Lord, the God of all my kind. Is anything too hard for me? So what is it that you are thinking about this morning? Month has ended, I have not received that in. Will it be possible? Can God do it? He's, he's asking you this morning, is anything too hard for God? And definitely the answer is no. Nothing is too hard for him. That's why when you look in the book of chapter Luke, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 13, it says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. Zechariah, your, your prayer has been answered. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Then if you go into verse 36 and 37, verses 36 and 37, It says, even the, that now, God has promised. Now see the fulfillment. He said, even Elizabeth, the angel was telling, uh, was now relaying this message. I said, even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. In so far, he said, for nothing, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. There was a promise, it was fulfilled. That is the faithfulness of God. And I say in your situation this morning, no matter what it is, no matter how difficult it is, spiritual, financial, material, health, that for your, in your case, because of the faithfulness of God, nothing shall be impossible in Jesus' name. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Because he is faithful. He is a glorious God. He is wonderful. And I, I want to encourage us this morning that now that we have examples of the people, I can go on and on, but I'm just watching time, of people that have experienced the faithfulness of God. You have the case of King Jehoshaphat and the enemies. So if your challenge is that you need victory over your enemies, you know that in Romans 8, uh, 35, he said we are more than conquerors. If your challenge is in having victory, whatever it is in your business, in your place of work, career, academic, no matter what it is, your victory is assured in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he that promised you is faithful. He that has called you is faithful and he will do it in the mighty name of Jesus. We can also say God has been faithful in redeemed Christian Church of God. A church that started with a, a handful of people in the city room. Now being over 166 or many countries of the world. It is the faithfulness of God and you are part of this mission. Therefore your case will not be difficult for God in Jesus name. Do you know that God has been faithful in Nigeria? We have COVID-19. I was listening to news yesterday, and they, I heard that in Zimbabwe, before their lockdown, four of their ministers died of COVID. Look at us in Nigeria. That's why all we are doing uh, political things and the rest. God has kept us. So we, we, you don't look at little, yes, they are dead here and there, but if it has been like it's been in America, you know what it will be now. So God is faithful in the case of Nigeria. So why will God not be faithful to you? God will always be faithful to you. And I pray as many things as you are trusting God for this morning, the Lord will do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now that we understand what it means for God's faithfulness, I want to bring out something. When you read promises in the Bible, there are conditional and unconditional promises. There is a difference between conditional promises and unconditional promises. It says that when God gives a conditional promise, Without that condition being fulfilled, God will not do it. Because he's also faithful, that's why. That's why when we look in the book of Malachi 10, that's an example of a conditional promise. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. Okay. Say, bring you all the tithes into the saw house, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devour, devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. And all nations concerning you this morning, all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Only Yinka did not say it. God said it. But what is it? There is a condition. He said, bring you your tithe into the house of God. So we must, when there are conditional promises, we must read our Bible. Don't quote out of context. Look at the condition. Fulfill it. Then you will experience the faithfulness of God in your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So as I begin to conclude, what does this understanding of God's faithfulness mean to us? It means that God is faithful in keeping his promises. He is faithful in keeping his promises. Hebrews 10.23. Hebrews 10.23. Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. He who promised his word is faithful. Whatever God has promised you, he is faithful, and he will do it in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you also know that when we talk of the faithfulness of God, it means that he is faithful in chastening his children. He is faithful in chastening his system. Let's look at Psalm 34, verse 16. Psalm 34, verse 16. Psalm, okay, for the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth, which means if you are doing evil, then judgment will be executed. I pray that by the grace of God, we will not be part of those that are doing evil in the mighty name of Jesus. So we, what am I saying? I say God is faithful in keeping his promise. He is also faithful in executing discipline. You can also see it in Hebrew 12, 6. You can see that Hebrew 12, 6 says that because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. You are a born again Christian. God has accepted you. So if you do evil, then he will discipline you. And I pray the Lord will give us the spirit of obedience in Jesus' name. The third thing about God's faithfulness is that God is faithful in preserving his people. Despite COVID-19, despite all that is happening, he's faithful in preserving his people. Because in Lamentation 3.22, it says it's by his mercies that we are not consumed. So he's faithful in preserving his people. He's also faithful in answering our prayers. You know God answers our prayer all the time. He can say no. He can say wait. He can say yes. He is faithful in answering our prayer. Psalm 143 verse 1. Psalm 143 verse 1. That's why David said, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. I decree this morning in the faithfulness of God and in his righteousness, it will come to your relief in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is making you feel uncomfortable, that is depressing you, that is troubling you, troubling your history, troubling your family, children, spouse, the Lord will come to your relief and rescue you this morning in Jesus' name. And remember, God answers prayer. Only take it to him in prayer. He is also faithful in forgiving our sins. God is faithful in forgiving our sins. We can see that in the book of 1 John 1, 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Say, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So this morning you may feel, oh, I've been very sinful. I've done things that I shouldn't have done, but it's also faithful. You only need to confess it, then he will forgive. And his promises will come to fulfillment in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus. So, having said it all this morning, this our understanding of and our knowledge on the faithfulness of God should give us confidence in this season. And know that, as we have said, it's a new season. It doesn't matter what it is. Today, 31st January, that new season will come in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are not yet there, you will get there in the mighty name of Jesus. Be confident, be bold. The Bible says those that know their God shall be stronger, they shall do exploit. Please, be confident. And then you will see the glory of God in Jesus' name. And also, because we now understand God's faithfulness, it should preserve us from worry. We worry too much. He worried, Matthew 6, 33, he said, do not be anxious. Don't worry about what I will eat, what I will drink. You just obey the word of God. Be hard working. Pray, try your businesses, commit your ways to God, and then lives will fall in pleasant places for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And what else do we need to do? We need to check our memory. We complain too much. Oh, is this? Even this season is hard. Is it? We need to check that. So we must always trust God and rely on His faithfulness. So I want to ask you this morning have you positioned yourself for God's faithfulness? We have seen that obedience is key. Obedience to God is key. Not only to God, obedience to your parents too is key. 
We can look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, obey your parents. Then he said, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So all of, some of us still have parents. Do we honor them? Do we obey the word of God? If you are not, you have not positioned yourself for the faithfulness of God. Do you obey your parents in the Lord? The pastors, daddy geo, the ministers, your head of department, they are your parents in the Lord, apart from biological parents. Obey your parents in the Lord, and I decree shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And then we have to be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor of God. We can see that in Ephesians 6, 10 to 11. And once we do that, going by that, then you will enjoy the faithfulness of God in Jesus' name. Going by, the, by all I have said, to enjoy the faithfulness of God, you must be in Christ. Live in Christ. Allow Christ to reign in your life, to reign in your home, to be in every area of your life. Let people see Jesus in you. That is, in your words, in your thoughts, in your action, the way you behave in your place of work, when we are seeing you, when no one is seeing you, let Christ be re reflected. Let your behavior imitate Jesus. And when that is done, then you will receive the faithfulness of God. So as we have heard this word this morning, let us, um, I want to tell us finally that only the deposit of his divine grace can take you to where you need to be. Only God, his grace in you can take you to where you need you need to be. Therefore, you need to position yourself, position yourself in the faithfulness of God. Shall we rise and thank God for his words he has spoken to us this morning, for the assurance he has given us. Let's appreciate him. And I want to say, if you are here this morning, you hear these words, and you have not positioned your, yourself for the faithfulness of God. The first thing to do, if you are not born again this morning, if you have not given yourself, your life to Christ, then you are not even his child. So even all the coming to church is for nothing. If you are here this morning, you've been coming to church, but you have never answered any altar call. You have never come out to declare for Christ. I'm speaking to us this morning to position yourself for the faithfulness of God. It is important that you answer the altar call and you declare you should not be ashamed of Christ because if you are not ashamed of him, then you will experience his faithfulness. So I'm calling this morning... This altar call for those who need the faithfulness of God in this new season. Please, if you are one of them, please raise your hand. Raise your hand wherever you are. And please, be bold. Part of, being, of understanding the faithfulness of God is to be bold for him. So be bold. And please, step forward. And let us pray with you this morning so that his promises can show forth in your life. And if you have given your life to Christ, there are one or two areas that you know that you have been disobedient. And that is the reason why that thing you are asking has not been done. This morning, I will confess, I say he's faithful to forgive us if we, for, for if we confess our sin. Let us confess our sins to him. And let's begin to thank him because his faithfulness will manifest in our lives. Let's appreciate him for this word we have heard so that he will not stand against us today. He will not stand against us on the last day when we are, before the, when we are going for the judgment. Let's appreciate him and ask for a spirit of obedience. If there's anyone here that wants to give his life to Christ this morning, please step forward. Don't be ashamed of God because your coming to church will be a waste. If you have not given your life, because the faithfulness is only to his own children. Those are the people that he would, that he would fulfill promises. Please step forward, don't be ashamed of Christ. And for all of us that we have given our lives, let's just thank God. This is a season of thanking him for his faithfulness in year 2021, for the benefit he has loaded for us this season. Let's appreciate him, let's give him all the glory. Let's thank him because of those things we are still waiting for that will be done. That will be done, not, they will not be delayed, they will be done. Let's appreciate him. He's wonderful. Let's thank him for his message. He's been our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's been our, our, pro, our deliverer. He's been our, deli our defender. He has been faithful in all that he has promised. God has never failed once. Everything he says he will do, he will do it. Let's appreciate him. This morning, the best we can do is to thank him for all he has done. Let's also thank him for those he will do in future. Let's give him all the glory. Because of his faithfulness, his words that are here and amen. Multiple promises he has for us. Let's give him praises in Jesus' name. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We thank you because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the rose of Sharon. Thank you.
you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you because you've been faithful from the ages past. We give you praises. Thank you for your words spoken to us this morning. Thank you for the confidence we have in you that no matter what happens, come rain or sunshine, your promises will be fulfilled. Father, accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. We have come humbly before you this morning. Every time that our hearts want to wander, let us remember your faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord God, that you will bless us in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Your promises will be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree this morning concerning us, and because of your faithfulness, we will not fail, we will not fall, we will not falter in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree this wave of COVID-19, we will not partake in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those that are being infected, Father, because of your faithfulness, because you are the great physician, Father, we pray, Lord, you will lay healing hands upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord God, all the promises for your church, for your church, Father, by your faithfulness, let them be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Every promise to our family, Father, we receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything we lay our hands on will prosper because you have said it in Jesus' name. And you will do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus.